somebody that was able to speak whose voice, I don't know if I've ever heard, I think maybe just in the Oprah interview before his wife spoke over him, but Prince Harry spoke yesterday. And it, it does, it feels like a rare act. He just has let Meghan Markle do all of the talking. She's now had a podcast. It's like she is his PR agent and she tells you why his family sucks and she does it like every month. And then she also tells you that the only reason they left was because they wanted their privacy and so they moved into Hollywood, which is not the, not the area that I would recommend, the neighborhood that I would recommend if you want your privacy. I also wouldn't recommend having a podcast if you want your privacy. But Prince Harry has actually spoke. Uh, he spoke to the winners of the 2022 Well Child Awards, which is a charity that celebrates the inspirational quality of the UK's seriously ill children, along with those who go that extra mile to make a difference to their lives. Here is Prince Harry. I'll tell you what, we all need a we all need a dog that keeps us calm. I've got I've got three in this house now, so we basically have five children. Um, but I've got <laughs> I've got a black Labrador called uh, Pula, a rescue beagle called Guy, and we got another rescue beagle called uh, Mia. Um, and between the three of them. Um, they charge around chasing squirrels and causing all sorts of problems to us every single day. No. They are, but they are also emotion, uh, emotional support dogs, 100%. No. I mean, I'm, I, you know, one of my biggest pet peeves is emotional support dogs, but I think he's, he just comes across as likable. And I don't know how it's possible that he's so likable and Megan is just seems to be the exact opposite, which brings me to her podcast. She recently released a new episode Uh, where she says that she's been labeled as crazy and hysterical and nuts and insane, although she doesn't actually say who said that. And she also says that she feels pretty strongly about the word crazy and that families have been shattered by its use. Take a listen. I'm Megan, and this is Archetypes, my podcast about the labels and tropes that try to hold women back. I feel pretty strongly about this word, this label, crazy. The way that it's thrown around so casually and the damage it's wrought on society and women, frankly, everywhere. From relationships to families being shattered, reputations destroyed and careers ruined. The stigma surrounding the word, it it also has this silencing effect. This effect where women experiencing real mental health issues, they get scared they stay quiet, they internalize, and they repress for far too long. Look, there's a lot to unpack here. So she says stigma around the word crazy has a silencing effect. I challenge that notion uh, because clearly she says that she's been called crazy and she's definitely not been silent at all, despite what she would have you believe. She keeps pretending that she's being in prison and nobody's allowing her to speak. I just want to say also in general, this sounds like the worst podcast ever. I I just don't understand people that think leaning into this victim mentality is something that people want to hear, especially nowadays. It's just, it's, it's just old. It's just aged. Nobody wants to hear how oppressed you are as a princess. It just doesn't make any sense. And I do think actually, I read a really interesting piece in the Daily Mail where they talked about this weird environment or this weird place that Harry and Meghan are in now because they don't really know how to make money, right? Their entire brand is talking about their own victimhood and they've kind of signed a deal with the devil. They've agreed to Spotify. You know, I think that the deal was something like $25 million and they agreed to this deal thinking that they were going to do something productive and healthy. But in reality, what Spotify wants is blood. They want them to continue to trash the royal family. And they seem a little less willing to do that now, especially uh, following Queen Elizabeth II's death. They don't seem like they want to give that, but they have no other use in society. Meghan was never a great actress. Nobody knew who she was before she got with Prince Harry, which granted her access to the parties that she wanted, granted her access to the billionaires that she wants to be around, like Oprah. Uh, But how is she going to make her money? Oprah's talented. Oprah is a, ha, was an incredible talk show host. She owns a network. She's very good when she gives these interviews. She knows how to get people to give her the information that she wants. What is the talent that Harry and Meghan have? Because I don't care how far left you are. I don't care how anti-family you are or how much you despise the nuclear family or the concept of a royal family that doesn't actually 
by the way, have any real power. They're not an absolute monarchy over in the UK, despite the depictions that uh, Meghan and Harry have given to society. But no, no matter how far left you are, you just become a little bit uncomfortable when somebody's entire brand and the only way that they make money is by denigrating their family. They're going to have to come up with a new plan. Moving on, I want to talk about this Planned Parenthood cartoon ad. Yep, Planned Parenthood is under fire, not because they've aborted millions and millions of babies and have ripped them limb from limb from their mother's womb. No, they've never been under fire for that. But they're under fire for a cartoon ad that teaches teenagers different ways of delaying their puberty some of which they say works like a stop sign. You can just stop your puberty. One of the ways is through the use of puberty blockers, which can halt voice deepening, facial hair growth, and menstrual cycles. The organization posted the video to its YouTube account in January, but it's recently resurfaced on the I Inside the Classroom Twitter account. Take a listen. There's no one size fits all puberty experience. If you're trans, intersex, or non-binary, know that you're not the only one feeling confused. For some intersex people, puberty may start later than age 14. You might experience some of puberty's changes and not others, and your body may or may not go through puberty on its own. There are medicines you can take to help your body start the process, like hormone replacement therapy. Some people decide on hormones or surgeries to help their bodies match up to their gender identity or how they feel inside about themselves. Your gender identity is real. You should be the one to decide what changes you want to make to your body. If you're transgender or non-binary, you may find that your puberty experiences don't line up with your gender identity or how you see yourself. That feeling can be uncomfortable, scary, and stressful. If that sounds like you, know that you're not alone. There are medicines you can take to delay puberty for a while. They're called puberty blockers, and they work like a stop sign by halting the hormones testosterone and estrogen that cause puberty changes like facial hair growth and periods. Puberty blockers are safe and can give you more time to figure out what feels right for you, your body, and your gender identity. You don't have to have all of the answers right now. So remember, it's all a work in progress, and it may take time to figure out what feels right to you, but talking to a trusted adult and a nurse or doctor may help. Want to learn more? Go to PlannedParenthood.org slash teens. It's just positively despicable. I mean, there is no question that Planned Parenthood is a death cult. It is. They are, they are a death organization. They specialize in death. That's what they do. They tell people that they shouldn't have families. They abort children from the womb of their mothers. I just can't imagine that this organization is still being funded by people. And now they are turning their attention to teenagers and trying to get them to destroy their bodies so that they can never become reproductive human beings. That's the game, right? Actually, we won't even have to perform an abortion on you because you're not going to be able to become pregnant. You are you're going to be rendered infertile. How brilliant is that for Planned Parenthood to realize, right? Because now that conservatives are once again winning on the pro-life, organi- uh, uh, pro-life movement, which, by the way, is sad that we had to win on a movement that supports life that supports families, that supports birth. Now that we have finally won that argument and sent that argument back down to the states to be voted on again, they're going, what can we do? What can we do? And their answer is to make sure that human beings just can't procreate. Target the teenagers. Target them and say, oh, you can just stop your puberty. Don't worry. By the way, we're not going to tell you that these uh, hormone therapy and these puberty blockers are actually used to castrate pedophiles in prison. We're not going to tell you that. We're not going to tell you that if you're a male and you take these for a long time, you're going to develop a micro penis, and you are actually not going to have any sexual desire if you take this for long enough. You're not even going to be able to have productive sexual relationships when you become an adult. And you're actually probably going to fall into a deep, deep depression when you realize this, when you realize that adults lied to you, when you realize that doctors lied to you, when you realize that you were intentionally confused intentionally targeted by an entire ecosystem of evil, an ecosystem that is happening in the classrooms, an ecosystem that is happening on social media, where they permit these lies to be told and spread around the world, and an ecosystem that ends up really in a hospital room when children are confused about why their bodies don't work the way that they're supposed to, because they were given credence to an idea that is a lie, 
No, you cannot pick your gender. No, you cannot halt your puberty like a stop sign. These are incredibly sinister organizations and people that support this. And I'm glad that Planned Parenthood is having their day in the public courtroom and people are starting to realize what this organization has always been about, which is death. All right, guys, the next portion of the show is going to be available exclusively on Daily Wire Plus. I'm going to be talking about Tulsi Gabbard leaving the Democratic Party. Yeah, we knew that was coming. So if you are not a member yet, go ahead and click the link in the description and subscribe right now.